Hey y'all, I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com, and I'm ready to play with some new supplies. Today I am working in my art journal and I'm planning on playing with some new supplies. I have this giant rub on from 49 and Market that I cannot wait to try. And then I wanted to play with this gilding polish. Um, it is a new to me supply that I picked up at the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo and I'm super excited um, kind of to see how it works and to play with it. So I will put you guys on fast forward. We are going to play in the art journal. Let's go. So I recently had a subscriber ask if I started my art journaling with the focus of a quote or a lyric or if I had an intention or if I started um, with the supplies. And the truth is I kind of go back and forth. In this case, I had new supplies that I was anxious to try, including this stencil from Art Anthology. I love the idea of kind of a border stencil, something that is kind of emerging from the border. So I decided, you know what, we're just going to go for it and we're going to put a border all around this page. It always makes me feel good to have a border on a page. I feel like it's similar to matting photos and scrapbooking. It gives, um, pulls focus into the page, into the middle of the page and so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just blending through the stencil using Distress Oxide. This is the Victorian Velvet color and really the jumping off point for this page was playing with supplies specifically using some floral rub-ons from 49 and Market. I love that rub-ons are having a moment in the crafting industry. I am super glad that they are back. Um, I love them. I think they're so fun to use. So I started with that Victorian Velvet. Now I'm going back over um, the edges of this with tattered rose. It's not making a big difference on camera, but I just wanted to soften some of the lines and do a little bit of blending into this art journal page. The page is not a bright white. It's definitely a cream color. And so I thought bringing in the tattered rose kind of just softens those edges just a little bit. I probably could have gone over this even more. I think I need to re-ink this particular ink pad. It just didn't seem very bright to me. All right, now I'm going to play with the stencil even more. This is another new supply that I picked up. This is the Posca paint pen. Loving the Posca paint pens. Those are just, you guys, they're just my favorites. And so being able to pick up just a few at the Scrapbook Expo, I was all about. And this one is in gold. I thought it'd be fun to emphasize some of the sketchy lines of this stencil. And so we're going to go through it. Now, you can see that there are parts on this art journal page. There are bleed through marks or kind of stain marks from other pages I've done. That's kind of one of the things you run into with an art journal um, book like this. When all of your pages are in one book, you're going to have pieces that run into other pages. That stuff doesn't bother me. I try for the most part to ignore it. If I'm starting a new page like this one, then I will do my best to cover it up. So I put florals over it and you'll see me um, put some other things over there. Um, but I try not to worry about it too much. It's really freeing working in art journaling and not aiming for perfection, but just having fun with the process, which is what I really try to focus on. It's been one of the things that has helped my creativity so much is learning to let go of the end result of some of these art journal pages. And one of the ways I do that is just by starting starting with the supplies, not with a specific um, look in mind that I want to go for, but just knowing that, hey, I want to play with these new supplies. They are kind of dictating the color scheme. They are dictating the feel of the page. And if I just let go and kind of go with the flow on this page, then something's going to come out. It's going to all start coming together. We know what we like to look at. So are, if there are pieces that I pull together that I enjoy seeing, then I know when I'm when they're on the page, they're going to look okay um, as well. Now at this point, this page starts taking a turn. We've pulled out acrylic paint. This is actually Jane Davenport acrylic paint. I don't think she sells it anymore. Um, and yes, I just am doing huge blobs on the page. I just wanted to break up some of the middle of the page. I didn't want this horizontal line. So we're going to go 
in the diagonal, one of my favorite kind of ways to work. And yeah, I'm just going over some of the florals. I'm just putting color down on the page. It's a little crazy. And now we're going to mix in a lighter shade as well, just to add some highlights in there. And yes, it looks a little crazy. And at this point, I was like, oh no, maybe I made a mistake. And I think that there is a point in every art journal entry where you think that. You're like, oh no, that was the wrong thing to do. Um, so if that happens to you, don't stop. It's okay. With mixed media, with art journaling, with working with layers, it's going to take a while to come up with your vision. So I took that off. I dried it off camera. Now we're back and I have these large rub on sheets from 49 and Market. Love, love, love this floral. We're going to aim that over here in the corner. All you have to do, cut out the image you want, remove the backing. You can see it's on this clear plastic. I lay it down where I want and then I take what is basically a bone folder. They give you kind of like a popsicle stick and you rub the image down. It transfers it to the paper, kind of like a temporary tattoo, except that it's going to be permanent. Then you start pulling it up and it releases from the plastic. If you pull up and the image comes up still on the plastic, no worries. Lay it right back down, rub over that section with the see how I'm doing the edges here with the popsicle stick. Anytime I see something kind of pop up, then I just put it back down, keep working my way around, and it's releasing the image onto the page. Look how beautiful it looks over top the acrylic. Love, love, love that. It's just, it's the colors. It's gorgeous. I'm here for it. And I'm going to add a couple more images onto the page just to bring that feel. So love the butterfly. We're going to add the butterfly right here. Um, to give us the feel of traveling because, of course, we're doing that diagonal line. And so the butterfly is flying from one flower um, to another, which means it's going to need a landing spot as well. Pull this up just like this. See, as soon as I start to pull up, if it's not released, I just lay it back down. But here we go on the page permanently. It's very opaque over the acrylic paints, which I very much like. And one last floral we'll put over here again, kind of a landing landing place for our butterfly friend. And this one, let me just speed up this process. I'm going to, yeah, rub it down with the popsicle stick and then pull it up. And I have all of these gorgeous florals on the page. And they just have a different look than if you used stickers or collage. It just melts into the page so beautifully. Now, as I was putting the florals on the page, I thought those aren't really the focal point I want. I think they're gorgeous, but they weren't the focal point. And then I remembered I had these printables. These are some older printables from Illustrated Faith. I printed them on clear sticker paper, and I'm going to put these gorgeous girls onto the page, and they are really going to be more of the focal point. And one of the reasons that is is because they have the black lines on them, that darker point is really going to bring your eye to these girls. I'm going to have a group of three because that's how I like things to look artistically. I think it's a cool, um, not a balance because it's three, it's off balance, but it's definitely a pleasing look to your eye to have groups of three. So we're going to use, again, the popsicle stick. This is not a rub on, but I'm using it just to make sure that that sticker paper is really down over the top of the acrylic paint and the rub on and everything that I used right there. And now we're going to bring in a little um, bit of a different color, a little bit more of that rose color that we see in the butterfly. I'm just going to add some little art marks here and there. And I put them over top of some of the stickers and some of the edge because I think that that incorporates things a little bit more. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm not doing a pattern per se. It's just a few art marks around the edges to bring in some more of that color and to incorporate the images into the whole art journal piece. I think the layers are what are so intriguing about art journaling, not just thinking one thing on top of another, but bringing things in and out of um, what you're creating. Now, this is a new stencil I picked up and Pixie Spray. That is what keeps stencils in place if you want some more crisp images. And it's time to try that gilded paste. It is always a little nerve wracking to try a new supply on an art journal page that you're working on. But I thought, you know what, we're going to go with it. I'm just putting a little bit of paste on. Um, it spreads pretty thin. If you go more, if you go a little heavier, see, now I got a bunch in it. It also spreads thick. So it was 
a little bit interesting to work with. This is definitely one that I'm going to have to play with. I loved putting it through the stencil. And if you can tell, I'm trying to break up the line a little bit. I maybe got a little heavy handed up here in the top corner. I don't really like how it looks up there, but you know what? We're going to work with it. We're just dealing with it. And I'm going to add it a few more places. This is cool. I like the sponge. It's a cool way to apply the paste. That way you can apply it pretty thin if you're wanting to. See how I'm just kind of turning it and pressing it down? I liked that look. And then I'm also interested to see how it does when you put on a thicker application as well. I thought the page needed a little brightness to it, and so I'm actually going to use Dina Wakely's acrylic spray. I'm having such trouble with these acrylic sprays. My, the nozzles on my sprays clog all of the time, and so basically how I use them is I unscrew them, and I just tap them, and I use them as splatters. I have tried all the things to maintain these sprays, and it's just really difficult. So it's kind of turning me off of them, if I'm honest, um, just because I can't use them very easily. And I've done the cleaning and I've done all the things that you're supposed to do and it's just not working for me. But I do like splattering them. So that's what I'm gonna do. Adding some white splatters all across the page. Just those pops of bright white bring a lot of brightness to the page. And I am trying to be pretty heavy handed on those. I'll put the splatters down and then pull this off, let it dry, use my heat tool to the side, and then I'm going to add a quote to finish off the page. To me, this felt like a pretty tranquil page. So the quote I ended up adding is, I am finding beauty in these still quiet moments. That is going to be it for this art journaling spread. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. As always, I will link all of the supplies that I used down in the description box below. We are playing with mixed media all month over in Patreon. If you want to learn more about how to put together art journaling pages like this or play with mixed media in some of your other projects, then head on over to Patreon. There is a tier for everyone and we would love to have you as part of that community. Community. All right. I hope that you all have an absolutely fabulous day. And as always, keep it creative.